Thank you so much, Aisha, for that um, incisive one, and I hope um, women out there got to learn one or two things from her. Okay, we'll move on now to our next guest. Um, drug abuse has been something that has been worrisome to the federal government, the state government, and even the local government, and to everyone in the society. Because whether we like it or not, it's becoming a menace, and um, it's also led to a whole lot of other vices, talking about maybe crime increase, and talking about rape increase, and a few more vices, you know. So that's why we're looking at drug abuse. And our guest today is also looking at it and providing solutions on what we think um, to do about drug abuse. I particularly liked the angle he's talking about government also decriminalizing drug addicts. You know, when we see drug addicts as um, criminals and then we don't uh, find a way of bringing them back into the society, they can become stigmatized and um, get depressed and then keep doing drugs the more, the more. And I like that part where he talked about that. Anyway, let's go over to Mr. Rotini Moses. As he talks to us on drug abuse, what the government needs to do, what we as individuals in the community also need to do as our own social responsibilities um, to people who are drug addicts and what we can do to also rehabilitate them and make them better persons in the society. I guess he's ready. Let's join Rotini uh, Moses as he talks with us on drug abuse. Hello. Good morning, viewers. My name is Rotimi Moses. Uh, today, this morning, I would like to talk about uh, the challenges of drug abuse in Nigeria and the way forward. And now, when we say drug abuse, drug abuse is putting something inside of you illegally, something that was not prescri prescribed by a doctor. Something you put inside your body that your body does not require, that is drug abuse. And then it becomes addiction when you cannot do without it. Today, you find out that our youth, even those in secondary school, even those in primary school are using drugs. Recently, the federal government banned codeine. But I want to tell you right now that... Uh, they, 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 my brothers and sisters, they have looked for another way to replace codeine. What is it? A bottle of Coca-Cola, a bottle of Coke that you know. That we, that, that we, that we, that we, that we buy Tom Tom. Sometimes five pieces, ten pieces, fifteen pieces of Tom Tom. And drop it inside this Coke. And it will dissolve. And they will hold it. And they will be drinking it. And then you will not be aware, nobody will know that what is inside this thing is Tom Tom. And they'll be drinking it. So they've used that to replace this coding that we're talking about. So banning coding is not the solution. It's not the solution. Today, when you, when you go out, you find a lot of uh, students, a lot of youth hanging here and there in school, in universities, everywhere, smoking cannabis. Smoking shisha. This shisha that we're talking about is a tobacco. It's a tobacco that has been savored with flavor, whether fruit flavor or so. You know, recently I saw in the Facebook, in the Facebook, little, a Facebook, a, a baby that's no more than four years. And the parents, whether the parents, I don't know, but from the noise, I, I can hear the noise, the noise, some, some, some words from the background. Somebody is definitely filming this day. A smoker. A business shisha at this age, it calls for concern. Even on Facebook, if you go and check my Facebook wall, there was one I pasted, and I was even asking people to if they can really get me these children, small, small girls with a boy in their, in their midst. They were using drugs. So it, 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 it's becoming unbecoming, and the situation. It's no longer, we, we should not tolerate it any longer. Because the pathetic one is even this injection that we are talking about. Now, it has got to a point whereby our youth, they are injecting themselves. By the time they destroy their veins, the veins in their heads, they will go to their leg. After destroying that one in their leg, they go to their neck. At the end of the day, they'll be having injuries. Injuries, at the end of the day, that will result into... 
you know, cancer and all kind of complications. And then today, our law enforcement agency, I, I give them kudos. I'm giving them kudos. They're really trying. But uh, the unfortunate thing is that they try to label these people, you know, criminals. They label them criminals. They criminalized drug abuse. So we, as a social worker, we are fighting for the decriminalization of drug abuse. So we are trying to work with policymakers to look into this. Because these people, they need help, they need our support. They are not criminals. And the, the unfortunate thing is that when you even, you know, wrap them up and put them in the prison, they are still abusing drugs, even in the prison. So, in prison then, it's not the solution. The way forward is to try as much as possible to wage war against these drug cartels, these drug barons that we have. They have their food soldiers, the drug peddlers. We need to do something. Like recently I was reading about a girl that, 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 that went to government secondary school. I don't know how to it is. You know, this uh, uh, girl's secondary school. And was selling cannabis to girls for a very long time. Until she was snapped by the police. So, uh, the, 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 the problem is, is becoming something else. And then we need to do something about it quickly. Government needs to do something. Parents, teachers, religious bodies, everybody. You know, when we talk about drug abuse, it is the ethic of everybody. We need to rise up and do something about this thing. Sometimes I will see parents. Parents are not even, they are not even, they are not even helping the situation. When you find your child abusing drug, you, you will give him hope for, for, for a torture. It doesn't solve anything. They need to be talked to. They need to be advised. And now I'm trying to tell parents, let's try as much as possible to take these children to professionals, to experts. Let them help them out. Like me, I'm a teacher worker. You can always reach us. We can always help. And also appealing to, to, to the government. Let's try as much as possible to, uh, to, to sanitize our recreational centers and put them in order and refurbish it. Thank you very much, ARTV, for having me. Thank you very much. Until I come your way again. My name is Rotimi Moses. I am a member of the Drug Policy Academy organized by Youth Rise Nigeria. I am also a volunteer, a social worker uh, with the Young African Leaders Initiative.